Dustin, congratulations uh, on the victory. I know it's kind of a, a weird ending, but obviously, uh, you know, a very exciting fight while it lasted. Uh, how satisfied are you as, you as you sit there right now with the performance tonight? You know, you never want to get a win that way, but the, um, what happened was a result of checking a kick. You know, I'm more than sure of it. And, you know, you, he, he got what he had coming to him, man. Karma's a mirror. And I busted my ass for so long to, to put myself in this position. I doubled down on myself after beating him in January when they offered me a title shot. You know, I doubled down on myself and it paid off. Nice. You were in there with him, obviously, just six months ago. So, you know, you're familiar with him at this point. Um, how did that first round play out? Did anything surprise you? I mean, he did have a couple of decent moments in there. Did anything surprise you at all? Uh, when he jumped for a guillotine, that surprised me. Um, Nah, he hit me with a good left hand. I kind of was at an angle. I didn't see it. It was, it was like a downward left hand. The kid can punch, man. He, he really can. He hit me with a good left hand. I, I thought he was going to use calf kicks against me, and I was right. Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Jump the gilly, your signature move there, right? Don't be silly. Jump the gilly. <laughs> It did look a, a little bit in there. I was trying to figure out. It looked like you were complaining a little bit to Herdeen. Oh, that's why I let him up. That's why I let him up at the end of the, uh, or, yeah, I don't know. But I let him up because he was, he had three fingers in my glove, you know, the, the cuff of the tape. So it's a good grip. And he's pulling me down into up kicks. He's pulling me down and kicking up at the same time. You know, I'm not, surp I'm not surprised that he does that type of stuff, you know. Uh, I was telling Herb that, you know, this guy's, I can't get, I can't get out of it. Did he acknowledge you at all? I got, that's why I couldn't tell what was being said. Did Herb acknowledge you at all? Or? When I told Herb, maybe Connor pulled his fingers out. I got to go back. You know, fighting's crazy. I got to go back and see. But I, that's what I was trying to tell Herb. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, you, there was a late sequence at the end of the opening round. I mean, you were pushing to the end. Um, when you went back to your corner at the end of round one, did you know something was wrong? It yeah, when I was walking away uh, at, and he stayed down, I looked down at his shin and I saw the bone. Like, I saw it was disfigured a little bit. And I was like, oh, man. It's just weird that it held together because I'm more than sure it happened on when I checked the kick that it held together. And then, you know, probably when he pivoted on that bone, that's when it probably separated or something. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. So as you walk back to your corner, did you go, the, the fight's over? Yeah. Yeah. I went to sit on the stool and uh, I forget who, who was it in my corner came up to me and said, this is over. You know, like you said, it's not the way you want a fight to end, right? But I do wonder, I mean, he said you were going to be leaving on a stretcher. He ends up leaving on a stretcher. I mean, that, do you take any satisfaction in that? Listen, I, Connor said some nasty stuff that didn't make it on Embedded. And, and maybe when this behind the scenes for this fight airs, you'll see him on the ground still saying some real, some real bad stuff. But even that stuff being said, I don't wish, you know, serious harm like that on nobody. The guy's got kids. Um, I want him to go home safe to his family. I pray uh, before these fights. Every time before I walk through the octagon door, I'm praying that not, not you know, not for me to win. Not, I, I'm praying that we both get out of this safe because, you know, I know what I'm going to try to do to him. I know what he's going to try to do to me, you know. He said afterwards the rivalry's not over. Dana White was here earlier. and Dana said, you know, obviously you're going to fight for the title next, but at some point you do the rematch down the line. Do you feel like the rivalry is over? Or do you feel like? No, we are going to fight again, whether it's in the octagon or on the sidewalk. You don't say the stuff he said, you know. It, the things that he did say, especially it, afterwards, you're saying about your wife and, and that sort of nah, thing. Nah, that's my wife's solid as a rock. I'm not worried about that. That's noise. He was saying that he was going to kill me. You don't say stuff like that, that he was going to murder me. You don't say stuff like that, you know. You, you don't say stuff about people's wives either, but I know that that's, you know, I know that's, that's zero chance. Uh, but there is a chance, you know, somebody could die. And you don't say that. You don't wish that on anybody, man. Last thing for me is it. I mean, you're fighting for the world title next. I mean, I know it's going to be a big moment for you. Um, early, I'm sure you want you want to go rest a little bit. I just want to know how much Chad Ochocinco lost tonight. <laughs> yeah, how You bet on Connor. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I figured you put more down than that as well. Uh, no, but I will ask you, obviously you fight with the title next. Do you have an idea? I mean, do you have a date circuit on the calendar, an idea? I mean, uh, how, how soon do you want to fight? I feel like I've been preparing for a fight since last year because I was getting ready for Connor in January. I fought him. As soon as the fight ended, I knew that was next. So I got home from uh, Abu Dhabi and started training for that fight. Um, I did a nine-week camp, but as soon as I got home from Abu Dhabi, I was, you know, I had one trip. I got to decompress a little bit, but I was getting ready to fight him again. 
you know, the, the last thing I want to do right now is go home and, and sign a contract and start getting ready right away. We'll see. I just need to get home and think about some things and decompress and spend some time with my family. You know, my, I just found out my little brother's going to be a dad. Uh, and I just want to be, you know, be around, around him. Dustin, to your left. Um, congratulations on the victory. I know you, the win means a lot to you, but are you most proud of the fact that you maintained your dignity and you didn't kind of stoop to those kind of things? It would have been easy when the crowd was going crazy at the press conference and all throughout the week. You, you did not do that. Is that what makes you proud of you know, your performance this week? I'm proud of the performance, but I am proud at uh, maintaining the mindset through all the craziness, all the talk, all the noise that's surrounding me when coming into these fights. You know, And it doesn't start just here on fight week. It starts... Uh, months away on social media you know in the last month i got off of social media and just let my agency post and they would they would send me a picture i would tell them a caption they would do it all and i wouldn't have to get on because it's just so much negativity and so much toxicity on that man i don't need that around me dude i'm trying to be a light i'm trying to help people look these my goal is to provide for my family and with these same hands that i beat these guys down with lift my city up lift people in need up and and you know just be a beacon of light to, to, and a voice for people whose voice isn't, isn't heard. And, you know, I feel like I'm doing that, and uh, I'm happy. How much do you think beating him twice will help your charitable efforts? Because now you're a much more notable fighter than you were, say, in December of last year, having beaten Conor McGregor twice. Do you, do you think about that and think it'll make more of an impact for other people because of these two wins? Yeah, anytime you beat a guy like that on a stage like this, you know, I don't know, this was a big fight. A lot of eyes were on this, and um, I got to talk about the good fight a little bit in the post in the post fight interview. But not only in the post fight interview, um, my career, my star gets bigger. More people are, are googling, and, and I'm reaching more, you know, more people. And with that, we can set bigger goals and, and just keep the good fight going. I have I have very big plans. We're going back uh, to Uganda to build housing on land we bought. Um, with the overflow money after we built the water wells during the Khabib fight. Me, Manny Pacquiao, Justin Wren are all coming together with our nonprofits and we're going there. We're going to build on 40 acres and I'm just excited and, and proud and happy to be in a spot like that to be able to, to recognize the position I'm in. And I'm, I, I do, I want to keep growing and these kind of fights do that. You referenced the guillotine be uh, attempt that he had before. You know, he put that quote out where he talked about, you know, I don't recognize losses by submission, you know, only chaos. So, <laughs> you know, when you look at it after the fight and you go, he tried twice on you on a guillotine, like, what does that say? The fact that he's dogging submissions and yet there he is trying to submit you twice. That just shows you, man, that it's all noise, you know? I feel like all the craziness he was doing, he has to do that for himself uh, to hype himself up. Honestly, man, I just, I'm good. I don't even like this shit anymore, dude. I, uh, I just scrap because I'm good at it and I enjoy the fight. But all this other stuff, all the talk, all, you know, I just, just come here to, to get in the fight. Last question for me, and I know, you know, you said you don't want to talk about an Oliveira fight, but is it going to be difficult in your mind? Like, you know, McGregor was such a big obstacle to overcome the last time because he had beaten you the first time, this time to prove it wasn't a fluke. Now you get to Oliveira and he's just a dude in the division, right? You know, that happens to have the belt. It, mentally, will that be a hurdle and will that be a little bit of a challenge during camp to get yourself back to that same place? No, he's not just a guy in the division who happens to have the belt. He's a guy who's picked himself up, up off the canvas time and time again, you know, uh, fought through adversity, through two weight classes, been in the UFC a decade. He's not just a guy with a belt, you know, he's earned, earned every ounce of gold he, he has around his waist and I have nothing but respect for guys like that. Uh, I don't know him personally, but his, his, his work history, you know, I, I can't uh, hate on anything he's done. The guy, you know, it's incredible. That's tougher to do than I think um, you know, to go undefeated, you know, because you, you never learn things about yourself. You learn so much about those, about things about, you, about yourself and those losses and of uh, climbing back up to the top and getting motivated again. You know, that's when you find out you're a real fighter. Not, I'm not saying that these undefeated guys aren't, but I'm just saying I have respect for somebody like that who's climbed back up and won a world championship. Hey, Dustin, down here to your left. Uh, congratulations on, on the win. Uh, trilogies in combat sports, there's always a sense of like closure and finality for tri trilogies. Do you feel that coming off of this win? Closure? It sucks, man, because I, you know, I was going to beat the guy if his, if his leg would have held up. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure yet. I, I need to digest it all, you know, because right now it kind of feels weird that I just 
I have a lot of fights, and I've never. There's always been a definite end to, to my. Well, besides the uh, first Eddie, Eddie Alvarez fight was kind of gray area, but it's not a good feeling, you know. I won, and I feel like his what happened was because something I did. But it's just, it's not like I went out there and submitted him or put him away. Uh, there's going to be so many voices and so many opinions saying, oh, you didn't win. You know, I know that. I know the MMA fans. I know the MMA game. And But I'm going back home to my family, and you guys here can check my record tomorrow, and it's a win. Um, I, well, I want to get your reaction on, on, on you know, some of the, I guess, the mixed reaction from the crowd tonight when you came out, you know, after the finish. You know, you're a guy who tries really hard to do everything right. You have a charity. You're a family man, and... You know, they're, they're cheering someone like Connor, uh, you know, over you. Even with all the things that he said, you know, some things that, like you said, were, were maybe crossed the line. Well, I mean, the, the fans' reaction, how does, that, how does that make you feel? Man, fans, you know, I appreciate them. I appreciate them filling up the seats. And uh, they're going to root for who they're going to root for. Um, like I said, it's noise. You know, I don't, I don't really overthink that stuff anymore. It's just noise. Thank you for buying the ticket. Dustin, over here on your right. First of all, congratulations on getting the win. Um, in the post-fight press conference in the cage, you referenced you brought somebody out to the to the fight tonight. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Tell us a story about that. Yeah, we did a fundraiser back home uh, right before I left to start training camp for a, a young man named Peyton Murphy, and uh, we flew his him and his mom and dad out here. He's battling a a, a bone cancer, and the cancer had went into remission. And then it's, it came back. So, uh, you know, he's a real fighter. Guys like that, that's who I want to lift up. And, and it's inspiring to me to see this guy, you know, going about his everyday life, still, you know, loving life and living life and, and, and never giving up hope, you know. Uh, that's, a, that's a real fighter. So, yeah, we, we flew his family out. And we, we did a fundraiser and raised some money for them uh, back home in Louisiana. That's good stuff. Um... All week, you did a pretty good job of not getting into the trash talk too much. You kind of took the high road all week. But in the post fight press conference, it seemed like he kind of dug into that a little bit. Did he say something to you afterwards in the cage that triggered that? And if so, what was it? Yeah, he was saying, uh, he was putting, dude, you, I hope they show the behind the scenes stuff, man. He was like still sitting on the ground, still saying, I'm going to kill you. He was putting his hand to his head like a gun. Like, bro, chill out. Chill out. Uh, he was saying that. All right, thanks, Dustin. Dustin, right here, the front. Uh, Dustin, a lot of the times when you have a champion leave, you know, the next guy coming in, there's like, well, you're great, but you didn't beat the man to become the man. You've now had two fantastic performances against Conor McGregor. Charles is on a great win streak. Can you talk about just how you guys, you know, this is a new era in the lightweight division, and both you and Charles, even though you have, you're not going to get that Habib fight again, you guys are now running the show at 155. That's anything, man. That's uh, not only sports, business, everything. You know, th the next generation comes up. There's new contenders. There's new hungry guys who's putting in work. And, and the game's not only that, the game's always evolving. So you have these young kids now who have been training mixed martial arts since they were 12 years old, you know, now they're 18 and start fighting and, and it, it's just a, a different uh, landscape for mixed martial arts because it's such a new sport. Fans talk about, you know, rivalry and, you know, the, the media gets into it, a lot of storylines get into it. When you think of Conor, you know, take yourself out of it in the competition, do you see it like this is a rival or is this just, you know what, this is a guy just having to be scheduled to compete against? Like, how do you see him, you know, in the story of your career? <clears throat> Yeah, he, I'm, I'm trying my best to, to not take it personal. But like I'm saying, man, I, I know I'm, try, I'm making it seem like a, a big deal talking about this over and over again, but you don't say that type of shit to people. You don't say you're going to kill somebody. You know, that I don't take that lightly, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Thank you. Dustin, right here. Uh, you know, you mentioned that you don't really, you know, like fighting too much anymore necessarily, but... I like fighting. I don't like the uh, the process. I don't like right. the sheep fans and the crazy clickbait media. Fair enough. You know, <laughs> every, it's turned into a fashion show. You know, I like the real stuff, and that's fighting. That's the only real part about this whole thing. Right. So, I mean, if you were to go back in time, though, like, if you never got into fighting, what do you think you would have ended up doing? I don't know. I don't know. I was getting in a lot of trouble before fighting, man. 
I'm not sure. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did for sure. And is it fun for you to kind of see all the celebrities at a big event like this? Yeah, it was cool, man. Steve-O came backstage, uh, David Spade, uh, a, a bunch of people. It's, it's awesome. Tonight was uh, packed. You know, Trump was right there when I turned around. It's crazy. The Rat King make it out, Theo? Theo's here, yeah. Right, Theo man. is here for sure. <laughs> hey, Dustin. Dustin, congrats on the victory. Right over here. Let's say you beat Oliveira and you become the lightweight champion. In your eyes, does Conor McGregor need to win a fight to get a title shot against you? Bro, Conor McGregor is one in, in three or one in four in, in the lightweight division. Yeah, he has to win some fights. But, like I said before, a guy like that goes out there and starts at somebody, he's right back in the top uh, contender talk, you know, just because of his star power. But Dustin? Dustin, over here? The guy with real questions at the press conference. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, all stories have heroes and villains, the good guys and the bad guys. You work with kids, you inspire, you motivate, you change lives. What's the message you can give to these kids about how people are cheering the bad guy and booing the good guy in a setting like this where they can understand how life really works sometimes? He is a magnificent personality, we get that. But the work that you do obviously the kids have to be confused why are they booing the bad guy what what do you tell them and how does that affect you personally i don't know i don't think about it that deep uh but that's just the world we live in you know that's just the world these kids are going to grow up in um I, I don't know how to answer that question does it does it you know when he is being cheered and they're, listen, this crowd is chanting USA for every other American fighter other than you. Doesn't affect you in any capacity? I, I definitely would rather them be cheering for me, but uh, like I'm pretty solid mentally now. I just don't care about that stuff. It doesn't really bother me, you know, because they can't, they can't get in there and fight for him. Dustin over here to your far right. So one of the things you were kind of hinting at was all the noise he was making, all the trash he was talking. A lot of people were thinking both of you guys were equally as confident going into this fight, but I wonder if you kind of feel that maybe he wasn't that confident going into this fight. Yeah, he's, I think he was overcompensating for that mental space where he's asking himself at night, you know, am I still that guy? Yeah. Um, and maybe he performs better when he's in that character, in that mode. You know, everybody has their own thing. I, I, I don't know. Would it make you feel any better or worse knowing it was all kind of a put on to try to get into your head because he didn't feel he had much of a chance? No, nah, you know, I don't hate the guy, but you just don't say stuff to, like that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. you don't say stuff like that. Last question. Great his speed. He has a lot of great attribu attributes. Um, his ability to thrive under pressure and, and cameras and lights is, is, you know, amazing as well. Uh, but he's just a human being, like I was saying at the press conference. You know, he bleeds just like me. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Would you mind to talk a little bit more about Oliveira? How do you see you can beat him? How do you see him as your next opponent? I got to – I haven't started – getting with my coaches and breaking down footage and doing all that, you know, everything that comes along with preparing for an opponent, but I'll probably just calf kick him. Probably. <laughs> when and where do you want to fight him? We'll see. I need to go home and decompress. Uh, I don't know the schedule for the UFC, what they're planning on doing at the end of the year. I know somebody earlier told me Charles wanted to fight me in December. So we'll see. You know, that's a We'll figure everything out. I just want to get home to my family. Dustin, question for you. Your mental focus was outstanding. You never played the McGregor games. I know that was a fo You didn't focus on the title either. You focused on Connor. Looking but, at Charles now, will that be an issue? Thinking about Connor, will the no. entire focus be on the title? No, because like I, I know f for certain, the title fight wasn't even going to be an option, you know, until tonight happened. So there's no reason to drain energy on on, on that plan. When I have uh, plan A right here, I can't look at plan B or the next step because uh, all I have is the moment. 
you know. Dustin, I think after the, the last event, a lot of us felt that the story between you two, everybody liked the interaction. But now after seeing what happened in this fight week, where, where do you think that it, the hate from Connor stems from? Like we were t just talking, maybe he has to build himself up to be that guy. To, and, and he performs better that way. He believes the, the stuff he's saying and he he's, turns into that character. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's a bad person. I don't know. And then a couple other lighthearted ones. Um, I'd love you to give you one more chance to plug the stuff that you're doing with Justin Wren and Pacquiao, a little update on um, where you guys stand with that and, and the work that you guys are doing. I have to get with my wife and uh, see the donations that come in through the website. And then obviously every fight I auction off my fight kit. So 100% of those uh, proceeds from the auction of my fight kit of what I wore tonight is going to go to that goal. And I'm not sure exactly where we're at with that, but I'm, I'm, I, uh, I would guess we're going in the right direction. And lastly, I'm not sure if you saw it in the, while you were in the back. Um, when uh, Tui Vasa was coming out and leaving the cage, he was doing some shoeies. I don't know if you saw, somebody poured him a shoey, but actually put your hot sauce in there as yeah. well. I don't know if you actually saw. He wasn't the biggest fan, but I don't think he was blaming on the fact of your sauce. It was just the fact that somebody actually put hot sauce in with beer. He said it was a no From a shoe? In a shoe. Don't blame it on the sauce, blame it on the feet. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fair enough, congrats. Yes, real quick to you, right? Final two questions. You, you mentioned how you don't get, you, you don't care about the, the stuff around the fight so much anymore, and you don't get dragged into the negativity. And we could see you kind of in the, the pre-fight press conference. It seemed like you were just willing yourself not to get pulled into his stuff. How did you get to that point? What, what was the process like to go from you know being pulled into some of that stuff to getting to this point where you're not as bothered by it? I, you know, um, it's just been a long process of, of years of making mistakes from being too committed and caring too much about everything, you know, and things that I can't control. I, I'm not sure. It's just evolution of, of myself, not only as a fighter, but as a, as a husband and, and, a, and a father. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I know who I am, so people can't tell me who I am. You can't sit here at a press conference and tell me who I am, you know? Come on. Lastly, uh People wondered, I think, after the last one being in Abu Dhabi in a different environment and how some of these fights with, without crowds have been like a real different feel. And then you come here and it's the exact opposite of that, a packed arena and a really high energy, high emotion kind of environment. What's, for you, what's the difference between those? How, how does it translate to a different fighting experience? I, like when I fought at the Apex last year, that was one of the best uh, fighting experiences I had. It was quiet, peaceful. Fighting's chaotic. When I'm in the locker room warming up, you know, I have these, the ang I have anxiety and nerves. I'm about to go in front of the world. You know, millions of people are watching. My city back home is, is watching and rooting for me. I don't want to let anyone down. I don't want to let myself down. I want to perform in my ability uh, at the top of my, you know, whatever I'm capable of doing, I want to perform at that. And, um, yeah, that, that, like, I'm just, over time, I've got acquainted with those feelings. So when I'm in the locker room warming up, I'm like, here we go again, you know? Uh, and I've learned that those feelings are what keep you alive, what keep you able to, to react in the moment at a higher speed and, and be, on, you know, be on your game. But I liked fighting in the apex when it was quiet. Dustin, I know you've, uh, you've, been, you've been up here a while, so I'm gonna let you out, get out of here, but you've been asked a bunch about you tuning everything out, you tuning Connor out, not paying attention to it. But what about, like, do you have to have a conversation with the family and people around you to say, hey, listen, a lot of stuff's gonna come out, like, just ignore it, don't pay attention to it, because other people might have a more difficult time. Yeah, well, my wife, yesterday. Thug, yeah. Thug, yeah. thug wife, by the way. That's <laughs> the new nickname. Yeah. My husband, or am I her wife? No, uh, my coach, yes, I think, said thug wife for the picture of her flipping off Connor in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what I mean, though, about, like, other people around you don't. Well, she was getting worked up, just like the stuff with the charity. I, but I've been in the spotlight a long time, been fighting UFC, had great performances, mostly. A few, few ones that didn't go my way. And I just know, like, the, the fire that comes down with, with that stuff. Um, so I'm more you know, equipped to handle all the hate. You know, she, she, she's not. So when the charity stuff started happening with Connor and 
a lot of hate was being thrown. She felt it because she, you know, does so much for the charity. So it kind of started bringing her down. And then with Connor doing this other stuff he just did, like, it was working her up more than it was me, you know. So, yeah. Well, the sauce, is how, 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 tomorrow? Sorry, how much, how much more difficult is it, like, when you don't have, like, you have to see your family going through it. You have to watch them because you are able to tune it out. You said, hey, it was cool, you're, you're chill. But then when you have to, it has to hurt you to have other people. Yeah, hurt. yeah, hurt. yeah. Uh, I don't like to see that, man, but I guess that's just, I don't know, I guess that's just where I'm at in, in the